Hey, how you doing? I just really wanted to share something right now because I can't sleep. Just feeling feeling the glory and the power of God upon me. So I figured I would just, as he's speaking to me, just pop this video on and just share this because I feel this is something that we do a lot. That um, we're just misinformed because we're seeing things from the mind of the world, the mind of flesh. Um, like the mind of lack and this mind of debt, um, and just always the mind of just selfishness and always trying to get things for ourselves. that when we look at some of these scriptures and read these, we interpret through, um, that eye of falsehood, that eye of lack, right? We, we interpret these things from the eye of the world, which is always thinking in usually negative patterns and patterns that don't amount to anything. So what I'm speaking of here is, this is something that I read before, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and Paul's talking about how he says, I have planted... Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. And what he's talking about is how people are becoming transformed, the ministry of Christ, and really how people are coming to God and how he's being used, right? He's just kind of like somebody that plants the seed because God gave that to him and, you know, Apollos waters. But God gives the increase, right? So then he says, So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth. So what he's saying is, hey, me and me and Apollos, you know, we aren't anything. But God that giveth the increase, God is the one that is something because that's where everything is coming from. That's where this power of love is coming from. That's where it originated from. We got this from God, right? He's the one doing this. He's just my father and I'm just following him. And what he's saying here, now going back to the part where he's saying we aren't anything. See now, because we don't understand what he's actually saying, we interpret this a lot of times and a lot of people that don't have an understanding and a knowledge of what this means is they're taking a lot of these statements where they're saying, you know, we're not anything or we're dying to self to mean like they're thinking that means that he's depressed or downcast or feeling bad about himself. You know, oh, I'm not anything, so I'm going to like make myself nothing. And I've seen many people that are sincere and they mean well, you know, Christian people, spiritual people that don't have an understanding, they're, they're still in the mind of the world and they try to make themselves nothing, <laughs> which you're only going to make yourself sick doing that. But what he's talking about is dying to self. That it means that you, you have died to yourself. There's no longer a self there to be hurt. There's no longer a self there to be depressed. There's no longer a self there to be anxious and fear and be hurt by the world. It's gone. And it's been replaced with God who is everything. Right? Because what Paul's talking about is in Christ. And this is something that I feel that maybe I haven't been speaking enough on in some of my other videos. Is that the foundation of everything is that we have died in Christ. That's what the baptism is a symbol of. We have been buried with Christ in his death, which means the self, myself, dies with him, and then I am resurrected unto a new life. So the old man is dead, and the new has come, a new creation. Which means that sin is gone. Sin is no longer an issue in my life. Sin is no longer holding me back sin which what are what are we talking about the sin all of the things of the world the depression and anxieties and anger and fear 
And all of these things are a part of sin, nature, the old man. So I'm no longer thinking in those same patterns because now I've been united with God, Jesus, the Son of God, when I see him face to face. Right? I see him face to face now. And the Son is the only one who has seen the Father. And now that the Son has come, and I see him, and I've believed in him, and I've died of my of self, of the old man, and I'm resurrected with him, and I'm seeing him face to face, now I see the Father, because the Son is the only one that's seen the Father. So now I am seeing him, and now I know God, and what is the Son? The Son is a love, because that's what the Father is. The Father is love. The Father is not sitting up in heaven, you know, he's not there, right? Um, thinking about all of the bad things that, you know, people are doing. Like, oh, I can't believe, oh, I can't believe Sally just did that after all that I've done for her. And then she turned around and stabbed me in the back, right? Because <laughs> that's how we think. That's how the old man, the, the human thinking of the world thinks. It's thinking about how people have hurt them and, you know, oh, I can't believe people have done this to me. But that is not love. That doesn't have anything to do with love. And we, I don't even think most of us even have begun to really even see what that actually really is. Because we lived in a mind so long that is about being, it's a selfish mind about self. And that's a, also a part of the scripture where it says, you know, hey, a man who a man dieth, a man might die for a good man, right? A man, and this is talking about Jesus says, a man might die for a good man, but who has ever heard of a man dying for, you know, wicked people, right? People that are evil. Who has ever heard of that, right? And it's talking about Jesus dying. Because he had such a great love for humanity. And he died for everybody to bring God, to show God to everyone. Because Jesus Christ, and, and that's what he's saying, you know, the mind of man, we're always thinking about ourselves. So who would ever think about actually doing something like that to bring the power and the love of God to show, hey, this is who God is. God is not what we see going on here, even though we we think that it is. We, we know inside that something's not right, but this is all that we see, and we wonder where God is, and so we don't think that God's around and that he's just too far off, right? And all these different kinds of thoughts that aren't true. But like it's saying, we're so far off from that, it's really hard for us to grasp it, but it's by faith, right? It's by faith. We're not continuing to try to say prayers and things to, to rid ourselves of that, but it's, it's faith. It's through faith that I receive the grace of God. It's not through the works of the law, right? So that's the whole point of this is that a lot of the language that you'll read will sound like when he's saying, you know, making myself nothing and, you know, we aren't anything. The mind of the world takes that as meaning that they're making themselves depressed because they don't, they have no grasp or comprehension of what it is to die to self and what that actually entails and what you actually feel the glory and the power that rises up in you because you're dead. There's no longer one there to limit us in limited beliefs and limited energy. And, you know, we're one with God. We're united with God. And we know that God is living right here inside of me. <laughs> and it's powerful, right? It's very powerful. But it's through faith in doing that. Like, I didn't kill myself. I didn't make this happen through fasting and, you know, beating myself and, 
making it happen, it was because I was keeping my mind on heavenly things and thanking the Lord and, and having faith, changing my perception, right? Changing my eye because we all have an eye that we're viewing the world from and we can either see it from lack and debt or we can see it through the Son of God who sees it through love and peace and joy and sees things through truth because he is united with the Father and unites us with him. So there's no longer, and that self dies, right? It's all the things of the world. They're no longer there to hinder my perception. When I look into the world and I look at other people, it's no longer there to hinder that and stop me from seeing the truth in another person, which is that they have value, that God loves them, and that just because they just did something you know, attacked me, I'm not going to allow their attack, to, you know, to make me change and, and lose my identity and my created value in God because they're trying to attack me because I'm in love and love doesn't get hurt. And love, you know, always, it, it never fails, right? Love never fails. So I can't be hurt if I'm in really love. So people that say that they know God or say that they're Christians but they're always getting hurt and retaliating, then they obviously don't fully understand this and they haven't died to their self. You know, or if you're still struggling with any kinds of, you know, sins of the flesh, you know, pornography and sexual addiction, drugs and all of that, you know, if you're still having problems with that, then that means you haven't died to yourself. You haven't, you haven't really put it to death. Which means is that I'm seeing through a different eye, you know. I'm not, I didn't make this happen. It was faith through grace. It was the gift of God. Because I prayed to God, Father God, I thank you that I'm not that old man. Father, I don't, I don't want any one more speck of that old man left. I want you and I want your new life. You tell me that I am a new man that's created in your image and that I have redemption in you. I have been delivered out of the old darkness and brought into light. And I have escaped the corruption. And just pray and thank God and just <sighs> thank you, God. And just declare those things. See, that's faith. I'm having faith. And hope in something that I have not been able to see yet. Because if you're still in it, if you're still seeing through the mind of the world, then that means you need to have the hope first. It's faith, right? Hebrews 11. And I'm having faith for something that is still yet to come to see Christ face to face eventually. And when he shows up, then, ah, Father God! Oh, Father! You know, Daddy God, this is you. So... That's what we're doing. Perception comes, and then God brings us inside of the gate. It's Him doing it, right? But my work is to have hope and faith, and it changes your life. It changes your life, and you're going to go out, and you're going to do things differently. You're going to live totally differently. You're going to love people. You're not going to be hurt by people, you know? Miracles and healings and laying on of hands and all that good stuff, but you have to change your mind. And one more thing, which is repentance, change your mind. Metaneo in the Greek. Metaneia. Neo, something like that, but similar. But it means change your mind. And one more quick little thing to read here. Chapter 4, this is going into this because I feel the need to hit some more of this because I'm speaking sometimes, like I feel like I'm speaking to people. I don't always do the best speaking into the camera. Like when other when I'm speaking to other people, I do a lot better and I need to like give them a camera <laughs> so that they can like videotape me while I'm talking to them. Sometimes I, I don't do as well when I'm speaking to a camera as when I'm speaking to somebody in person. And I'm, you know, the, the Spirit of God is leading me to speak things to them. Sometimes I feel like it comes out a lot differently than when I'm speaking to a camera for whatever reason. But I really feel like this one's going good. <laughs> it's good. 
So, chapter 4, Romans chapter 4, he is saying that Abraham was justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what the saith the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness, right? Now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So what is he actually talking about? He's talking about work, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So he's talking about one that worketh, and then one that worketh not. And the one that worketh, his reward is reckoned not of grace, but of debt. So his reward is re reckoned of debt to him. So what is this actually saying? Because in the one that, that worketh not, it's counted as faith because he has faith and it's accounted as righteousness. But what does this actually mean? Because I know a lot of people are probably confused of, with this. But what this is actually talking about is it's talking about the motive of your heart. Because it's the same thing that we're talking about before. The one that worketh, the motive of his heart is selfishness. The one that's working is doing it for his own glory. The one that worketh, so because it's coming from selfish a selfish place of the old mind, it's a debt to him. Because everything that he's trying to do is about self, and it's coming from a place of actually lack, and coming from a place of debt. So therefore, because it's limited, and it's not actually part of God, it's not fully God and who he is. It's not seeing fully who God is. So we're not justified by that, we can't be justified from that place. From that place where I try to come through in my heart, there's going to be no grace, there's going to be no miracles. There's, we're not going to see any of that power of God because there's no place for the power of God to actually channel through and come out and actually do the healing because it's not me, it's God doing it. Right? I've died. <laughs> died to my old self and if that man is still there he's going to get into the way and things are not going to go as good <laughs> if we're under grace and that's what it's saying the man that is in faith and that doesn't work he's coming from a place his motive is from a place of a new creation of limitless love Right? That's what he's saying. Because he's limitless love because he's united with God now. He's died and now he can see true. He's seeing from a place of redemption. <laughs> Man, this is good. And then it just keeps on going. He's saying, Blessed is this man. Blessed are they happy, right? <laughs> happy is this man because all of his iniquities are forgiven and they're covered. Because when I'm in this place, I don't have any thoughts of God counting any sins against me right now. I mean, literally, right now I can tell you that I feel that I am in complete right relationship with God. And I know that and I truly am because... I am one with the Father, and He's living in me. And I know that I'm in right relationship. And I know that my sins are covered. I know that they are, because the old man is no longer there. He's died. He's not there to be talking in my mind and telling me, Oh, you know, but what about this that you did before? You know what I mean? No. <laughs> He's gone. He's gone. And now I only hear from my Father in heaven. You see, the world has another father, <laughs> the devil. So what we want to do here, guys, is you want to die to yourself. We have to die to ourselves. We have to put it down through faith. Don't you see? We want to be of this one of faith because the one of faith is the one that receives everything from God and he doesn't have to work for it. We're not, I'm not doing things. I'm not trying to, to fast and and I'm not saying that those things don't have benefit in some area. But I'm saying to receive this power of God, I'm not 
doing stuff. I'm not fasting. I'm not, you know, doing all of this stuff, but I'm get going alone in the secret place with God and getting alone with him. And I'm having faith about who he says I am. And doing that over, I mean, you, you, you don't know. You don't know what I, how many hours and how long I've spent being alone with God because, you know, that's the place that I go with Him. And that's what, that's what nobody's doing. You know, most people are wondering why they're not experiencing any life and they don't have a relationship with God because they've turned Bible study, right? I can't even think of the scripture right now that I'm thinking of. Where he's talking about just, you know, it's like Jesus is talking about, you know, you, he's talking to like the Pharisees, you read the law and you try to find God in the scriptures, you know, and he's like, as him or whatever he's telling him, but like, I'm right here and you won't accept me and I came from God, <laughs> right? And like, that's what people are doing. They're like, they're like trying to read and find God, but they are, and, and they're trying to read it as like a theology, and just oh, it's my Bible time, you know. But they're not actually making any kind of relationship with God. They're just like going and trying to read, and then thinking that you can have some kind of relationship without the Holy Spirit and without actually having a relationship with God. And it's no wonder that you know. You're like one foot in and one foot out and you hear a lot of these Christian people still talking about the world and a lot of the things that they talk about are limited and, you know, lack of belief and healing and just limited belief and talking just like the world and, you know, being hurt by other people because you don't have faith, right? They don't have faith. Most of these people that say that they are. And I mean... And I don't like that. You know, I really don't. Because, man, it's just... God's power is real, man. This thing is real. And we can have this power. And, um, you know, we can be free. But people, you know, are getting caught up in the things of the world. And they're not maturing into who they're created to be. You know, the things of life and the pleasures and all of these things of life get in the way. And then we can't see clearly through our eye. Um, and that's the thing. You have to want God more than anything else. And you have to be willing to spend time with God to know these things and to know this. And to give up, to give up putting the things of the world first. It doesn't mean that we can't have things. But they can't be before God. We need to put his kingdom and righteousness first and then find him and then and then the, the things will come. We're, I'm no longer, you know, I'm no longer worried about any of these things because I don't have any fear of losing them. I'm not attached to any of the things in my life, you know, so there's no fear there of losing any of these things or you know, or even relationships with people, you know, I'm, I'm there to love somebody else, you know, they're not there to try to give me something, even though that's how I used to, to look at it, people, you know, oh, you know, I have these certain things in my mind already when you come that I think you need to be doing for me, and if you don't do them, then oh, something's not right now. Oh, I'm going to the church to, to be loved. And if you don't love me, I'm going to be hurt and I'm going to go somewhere else, right? And that's not love. <laughs> it's not, it's not love. So we need to be looking at ourselves and seeing that uh, we got a much higher calling here <laughs> than the way most of us are living, right? So things up to about 25 minutes and um you know if i just appreciate you watching this you know i love you and i hope this spoke to you that god's grace would just come into your heart and that you know this would just speak to you you know and begin to wake up something inside of you 
so that you can begin to have faith in yourself, right? We have to do this thing. A lot of the time, we're going to be in fellowship with other people and all that's great, but the the part of this that's going to happen when we're alone with God, spending our own time with God, and, and that is where we overcome all of our things, you know, all of the the trappings of life and the things of life. And that's where the power is really going to come from, right? So God bless. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.